Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is about 10, 10 p.m. California time here. Friday night, August 23rd, 2024 is the date. Uh, latest activity, a 4.1 down here across the uh, Middle America Trench area. It looks like just off the coast there of Nicaragua. Uh, we're still seeing some earthquake activity in Nevada. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here across this area. Just outside the Walker Lake area, still seeing a little bit of swarming. Uh, including uh looks like a 3.6 coming in here just a short time ago in a sequence of earthquake activity uh, if we look at the last seven days here there's been a handful uh prior to today's activity as well so something out here brewing uh we got these uh various magnitudes and the depth of these earthquakes there all over the place as well looks like between three four five uh, miles below the surface some shallower some deeper uh, so not for sure exactly what we're looking at out here um, As far as volcanic activity, I don't think this is volcanic. There may be some uh, uh, Older areas around Nevada that may have uh, you know ancient volcano activity But this is uh, I think it's related to some fault systems out here across these mountain ranges uh, So we'll definitely continue to watch that we got about, uh, about 46 earthquakes here in the area just in the last week and um, you know as you can see a lot here in the last hour including that 3.6 so things are on the uptick there across that area of nevada uh, we got hawthorne nevada here to the south by uh looks like about six or seven miles or so uh, so i'm sure it's possible they may be feeling some of these earthquakes there and um i looked at historical data earlier uh, in the update this morning and there's not a whole lot of larger scale activity out here uh, but who's to say that it just hasn't been documented? You know, it's just USGS has a uh, uh, history catalog that you can look at. And there really wasn't anything of any uh, large activity out here historically. But again, that could be, uh, uh, it, it's possible. Could have had some larger scale activity out here in the last couple thousands of years and been building up a little steam out here. Ever since then, and uh, who knows, we could see some larger quake activity out here. We'll definitely keep an eye on it. It is uh, yeah, a ways away from Tonopah, Reno up here, so not a whole lot going on between those areas. Uh, Southern California still seeing a little bit of activity tonight and throughout the last 24 hours. Nothing of any abnormal activity there for now, but of course we'll continue to keep an eye there on the Southern California region. Uh, up into the uh, Cascades here, a couple smaller earthquakes around Mount St. Helens once again. Uh, nothing big, just a handful. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map here tonight. By the way, I've increased the cursor size here by quite a bit. <laughs> uh, I had a few folks asking me if I could, uh, uh, you know, raise it up here a little bit in terms of the size so that they can see exactly where I'm uh, pointing at and what I'm trying to explain here. So uh, hopefully uh, it's working for the folks here that uh, wanted a bigger cursor. 671 epicenters here of Trimmer uh, underneath the Washington area and also a little bit down here across southwestern Oregon. Uh, and this has just been uh, a little bit on the uptick here. This event is more populated in terms of the volume of uh, epicenters compared to our most recent event back in June. And that June event was mainly down here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone far as trimmer activity goes. It uh, looks like we're starting to catch up now. All right, uh, Yellowstone National Park. I know we had a little bit of earthquake activity this morning. Uh, it doesn't look like they got around to reporting it. Um, let me show you guys here real quick the activity I noted here this morning. Um... Yeah, it's going to be uh, a handful here around West Boundary, Maple Creek. Showed up here at Hebgen Lake as well. It's going to be the sequence of earthquakes here. Uh, those are definitely above a one, probably a, a two magnitude there, uh, as they did show up across numerous seismograph stations in the area. But uh, USGS did not get to uh, reporting them. Uh, some wind events earlier, so maybe some thunderstorms in there as well late afternoon. Uh, summertime thunderstorms there at uh, Yellowstone National Park is uh, quite common. But aside from that earthquake activity this morning, things are pretty quiet across the board there for now. Uh, mainly smaller quakes across the area of the um, oil fields out here. One little lonesome earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone from earlier. 
Uh, this afternoon, it looks like, about 12.37 here, California time for 2.2. Uh, All right, let's check out Hawaii, see what's going on out here. Getting the, I got a new mouse coming because I, I try to fix my mouse wheel here and uh, it's just, it's old. It's about a year and a half and I use this thing a lot. So got a new mouse coming and uh, we'll get rid of that choppiness when it comes to zooming in. Uh, mainly smaller microquakes up here across the area of the Kilauea volcano. A little bit down here to the south, uh, southeast, but really no major uptick that I can see uh, going on there for now. Uh, real quick glance here at the, uh, let's check out the deformation data here real quick across the summit area. Uh, kind of leveled off here a little bit, looks like. Not uh, really seeing anything of abnormal activity. Uh, for now, but obviously this area is quite elevated in terms of inflation underneath the area. So um, eventually we'll see something take place out there. As uh, far as the uh, rest of the globe goes out here, let's see what we got for a movement. Getting a little bit of swarming going on up here where that seven pointer struck here a couple days back, a few days back. Uh, always of some concern that we could see some larger activity out there. The curl come chuck curl. Uh, Kamchatka Trench here is very capable of producing a 9.0 earthquake, so uh, I think there's definitely enough strain built up there. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that area. Uh, a little bit of clustering going on here across the Java Trench. This area eastward here into the Indonesia Islands area. Some more earthquake activity in Australia. Uh, goodness, they just keep getting a lot of earthquake activity down here. And these are some intraplate earthquakes, uh, which should put New Zealand here in the hazard zone with a lot of a lot of stress being built up out here. Uh, New Zealand really hasn't moved all that sufficient here most recently. It's just been some threes, deeper earth earthquake activity, an occasional four, but uh, we'll keep an eye on the plate boundary out here. Uh, 3.1 just north of North Island there earlier today. And uh, getting the mixed bag of deep activity once again here into the Tonga Trench. That's a lot of earthquake activity in Nevada stirring up crazy. Uh, Middle America Trench, here's some fours coming in. South America area, a handful of twos and threes. Uh, one earthquake here on the top. North of, uh, well, this would probably be north of Greenland here, a 4.0 coming in. Let's go ahead and check out the Iceland activity real quick, see if anything has changed up there. Um, let me bring that up here real quick. We'll go to the live from Iceland site here where we'll see if the eruption is still ongoing. There's at least uh, one good fountain going on here in terms of the lava fountaining. Um, let's see what we got. I know it's died off a lot here since the eruption began. Uh, but there's still at least one decent area. It looks like maybe over here as well. So let's go see if there's any new updates here from the Icelandic Med Office. Uh, this update was put out. Yeah, I think this was earlier today. They really haven't updated anything yet. Uh, just kind of chatted about how things have drastically uh, declined since the eruption there yesterday main activity is limited to two areas but this is a little bit older so this you know they're uh this was put out early this morning it looks like so nothing changed uh, obviously a, a dying down of the volume that's coming out of the ground there uh, and that should uh that should continue there for a little bit let me see what we got for the inflation out here um, eight hour run times. Let's see how much volume of magma we lost here. Uh, let's see. There it is. So we check out the Grindavik area. Here's the most recent eruption right here, right? Look at all that. Uh, June, July, a couple months there, even most of August here, seeing a tremendous amount of volume of magma accumulation below the uh, Savart Singhi area. There's the eruption, huge drop here. So that does look like um, it's depleted a lot of it. Because here's our previous eruption back in the end of May. Um, so we'll watch it. We'll see what happens here uh, if we start to go back up and, and recycle the whole thing again. It's rinse and repeat. 
eruption after eruption here. So Iceland, of course, a very active area uh, for volcanoes. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Over here across the Japan area. These earthquakes from earlier today, a couple fours out here. Still watching the subduction zone that the uh, Japanese folks there believe will produce a mega quake here soon. And uh, it's, well, it's got a little earthquake on it, 4.6. But uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, space weather activity. Uh, a number of implers here over the last 24 hours. Most of that activity is from sunspot. Uh, 37, uh, let's see here, is it 37.99? No, it's going to be 30, uh, 3,800 here. This area showing uh, quite a bit of inflare activity and actually quite a bit of growth here recently as well. 3,800, the newest image showing a lot of peppering going on here of the magnetic structure. We'll continue to watch this area for some flaring. And... Um, well, I mean, this area is starting to grow a little bit as well. So either way, the overall threat out here uh, for the solar flare threats, 15% chance for X flare, M flare at 70, C flare around 99% chance or so. And uh, again, there's no major auroras in the forecast. It's a repeat here. Unless we get some earth directed CMEs, it will stay very minimal. All right, folks, I'm just going to keep this short for a Friday night. Uh, we'll catch you guys back out here early in the morning for the Saturday morning update. I uh, got some rain coming in here to Northern California overnight. Uh, so, yeah, it should be nice, but I'll be in bed by the time it comes. But uh, I'm hoping for a little bit. It'd be nice to settle the dust down a little bit uh, and temperatures into the 70s after being a couple months here into the hundreds for consistent hot weather. I'm, I'm done with it. So we got a little cool weekend, and then it warms back up here, it looks like, next uh, next week. But um, I'm going to enjoy this cool weather while we have it. You guys have a good night. Stay safe out there. A little earthquake activity on Cal State Bakersfield. Have a good one. And, uh, you know, always just be prepared. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Stay safe.